this video will introduce some key concepts in set theory, which is extremely fundamental for computer science and probability. We're going to talk about definitions of sets, cardinality, subsets, and set equality. So a set S is an unordered collection of objects with no duplicates. They can be finite or infinite. The cardinality of S is denoted using this absolute value symbol, and it's just the number of items in S. There is only one set of cardinality zero, which is the empty set, which is denoted like this symbol, or using brackets. So some examples of sets are the set of real numbers, or this set of fruits, or the set of all real numbers between zero and one, or the set of all positive integers, or you can even have a set containing sets as elements. So let's do some examples of the cardinality of the following sets. So this set clearly contains three distinct fruits, so the cardinality is three. What about this one? Well, this contains a bunch of ones, but they're all the same element. And remember, sets only include unique elements, so this is really just the set containing one. So there's only one unique element. What about the set of real numbers from zero to one? There's an infinite number of real numbers between zero and one, so the cardinality is infinite. What about the set of positive integers? Well, you can keep adding up, so there's no end to the positive integers, so the cardinality is infinite. What about this one? This set actually does contain four unique items, which is empty set, the set containing one, the set containing two, and the set containing one and two. And these are all different objects, so this set actually does have cardinality four. What about this one? This also seems to have a lot of sets, but if you look carefully, these sets of ones are all the same set because this set is the set containing one, and this set is the set containing one. Remember, we ignore duplicates in sets. So therefore, these sets are all the same. There's only two unique items in this set, which is the empty set and the set containing one. So two elements. Okay, so now let's talk about subsets and equality. So if X is in a set S, we use this symbol to write X is an element of S. If X is not in a set S, we use this symbol to write X is not an element of S. We write A is a subset of B to mean, sorry, this symbol to mean that A is a subset of B. So for any X that's an element of A, it must be the case that X is also an element of B. And we use the reverse symbol to mean that A is a superset of B, which is equivalent to B is a subset of A. And we say that two sets A and B are equal if and only if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. You have to show both directions. So let's do some examples if these sets are defined as follows. Are these statements true, false, or nonsense? So first one is one is an element of A. This is clearly true because A contains one and three, so one is an element. What about one is a subset of A? This is nonsense because one is not a set, one is a number, so it can't be a subset. What about the set containing one is a subset of A? Well, is every element of this set present inside A? Well, this set contains only a single element, one, which is an A, so therefore this set here is a subset of A. What about the set containing one is an element of A? Well, A contains no sets as elements, so this is false. What about three is not an element of C? You can check that three is not present inside C, so three is not an element, and it, this statement here is true. What about A is an element of B? Again, A is a set. B does not contain any sets as elements, so therefore this statement must be false. What about A is a subset of B? Well, every element inside A is also present in B, so this is true. What about C is an element of D? Well, C is this set here, and you can see that this set exactly is also an element of D right here, so C is indeed an element of D. What about C is a subset of D? Well, every element in C is actually inside D. You can see one here and two here, so therefore C is also a subset of D. That's unusual. What about the empty set as an element of D? Well, that's true. The empty set is definitely right there as an element. What about the empty set as a subset of D? That's tricky, but the empty set is actually a subset of everything because if it was not a subset of D, then you'd have to find some element in the empty set that is not in D. But there is no elements in the empty set, so you can't find an element that violates this property. So the empty set really is a subset of everything, true. What about A is equal to B? Well, we already showed A is a subset of B, and similarly, is B a subset of A? Well, every element in B is in A also. So therefore, both directions of the subset relationship hold, so A is equal to B. What about empty set as a subset of the empty set? Uh, this is also true because the empty set is a subset of everything like we've discussed. What about empty set as an element of the empty set? This is totally false because the empty set contains no elements, so it can't contain anything as an element. Thank you.